Today, I'm going to discuss discovery learning. We have seen a lot of pictures too often that, for example, an elementary school student slump over at his desk, bored and restless, his face barely supported in his hands. He's trying not to fall asleep as his teacher drills content about basic anatomy. The heart is here, the lungs are here, and the kidneys are here. The teacher gives the class a worksheet asking them to fill in which body parts go where. It's due at the end of the period and the only way to measure whether the students have learned anything is based on this worksheet and the uh, inevitable unit test. Now, try to imagine elementary students walk into a classroom and see a basic skeleton with a model of the heart, lungs, kidneys, stomach, and intestines laying on table in the center of the room. Students gather around in a circle, see the model organs, giggle, and begin to guess the name of each body part and its function and through trial and error, figure out where each organ fits in the model. Now, both lessons have been used by teachers, but one lesson has students actively involved, curious, and engaged. The other relies on direct instruction, road memorization, and knowing information for the test. Now, um, one lesson is memorable for students, definitely, while the other relies on a student memorizing information now which lesson do you think will have a lasting impression teaching methods that rely on of course student-centered learning are considered a more effective style of teaching because as the name suggests lessons are based on the student and meeting his or her psychological needs to achieve learning outcomes. If an educator takes a child's development into consideration, he can prepare lessons that will not only, of course, engage the student, but also leave a lasting impression. Going back to John Dewey, uh, John Dewey's um, writing about student-centered learning in the early part of the 20th century. In his book, The Title, The Child and the Curriculum, he emphasized that children need a chance to explore, experience, and connect information to truly understand and internalize abstract principles. Now, um, Dewey also felt that curriculum shouldn't be made interesting to students, but should uh, instead already be of interest to students in order to avoid apathy. One of the most used versions of student-centered learning is the what we call learning method or discovery learning. The discovery learning method class is an active hands-on style of learning originated by Jerome Brunner in the 1960s. He emphasized that we should be learning by doing. With this method, students actively participate instead of passively receiving knowledge now, um, students interact with their environment by exploring and manipulating objects 
wrestling with questions and controversies or performing experiments. So they're also encouraged to think, ask questions, hypothesize, speculate, cooperate, and collaborate with others. In this manner, they develop confidence in problem solving and they feel comfortable using knowledge they already have. Instead of a student being an empty vessel for a teacher to fill with knowledge, the discovery learning model or method takes into a consideration that all students have some background knowledge that they may be able to apply to current subject at hand. Now, the discovery learning method is a constructivist theory. This means that it's based on the idea that students construct their own understanding and knowledge of the world through experiencing things and reflecting on those experiences. According to um, a very famous uh, philosopher, Willy Wonka, um, he mentioned that we are the music makers. We are the dreamers of dreams. And uh, he's also a constructivist. And uh, his factory constantly used the discovery learning method. That's... That is what made his chocolate factory so exciting to children and adults alike. So because there was hands-on learning and trying in his factory. Um, given some of the results were not favorable, but each time something happened to a child, an Oompa Loompa would sing a song not only reiterating the lesson but also reminding the children and adults that they should have known something would happen based on their prior knowledge. So this hands-on approach created lifelong lessons nobody would ever forget. The discovery learning method is also unique in how it presents problems. So teachers will give students a problem and some resources to solve it. And in this concept alone is very different from standard science experiments. You may remember when you were growing up. So most science teachers would give the instructions for an experiment perform the experiment, show the result of the experiment, and then grade the students on their write-ups of the experiment. There's not much discovery happening when students see every step and desired outcome become, they even attempt it on their own. So students are simply performing a task they watch someone else do. Now, the discovery learning method may have a specific end result, but the focus is on the steps and the critical thinking involved in getting there. Now, um, teachers must observe the process, not just grade a written paper at the end of the experience. Another educational psychologist, Jan Piaget, also viewed children as little philosophers and scientists building their own theories of knowledge. The book Hands-On, Hands-On Science, best summarizes what he said. Now, um, though most people associate the discovery learning method with science classes, it can be applied to all parts of a curriculum. For example, in an English class, Teachers may introduce the dreaded Shakespeare unit with list of vocabulary for each act and make a student fill out a worksheet while watching a biographical video about Shakespeare and the Globe Theater. If we use a discovery learning method, however, a teacher could give the students a handout to create their own 
Shakespearean insult by choosing a word from each of three columns. So after everyone gets a chance to hurl their best insult, they have a better understanding of Shakespeare's language and could keep a notebook of insults they come across during the play. Now, why educator training is important in this um, learning method? The discovery learning method, if, of course, used incorrectly, can be a barrier to learning. If teachers are having activities just for the sake of having activities, then students will not learn the concepts. Of course, formal training in this method, as what I mentioned, is necessary for teachers. And teachers also must reflect about how their activity is helping students master a concept. Teachers must remember that just because something is hands-on, it doesn't mean that it's minds-on. So how do we successfully implement discovery learning method in the classroom? Um, to effectively use the discovery learning method in a classroom, a teacher needs not to not only be flexible, but also well-prepared, organized, and have an understanding of what is discovered in a class is educationally valuable and can lead to further investigations for the student. So teachers need to be able to help young children who are already curious about the world around or the world around them, learn how to ask questions that will help them understand their surroundings. Teachers also have to know where their students is developmentally and how that will play in a role in a child finding success in a lesson. So this may sound like a lofty goal, but most educators have to take classes in developmental psychology that are specifically geared to the age with which they want to work. Moreover, teachers using the discovery learning method cannot wait until the end of the activity to access a child. Instead, they interact with students to see what the student is doing, what kind of questions are being asked, and they help them apply any new skills that may be necessary to solve problems and draw conclusions. The teacher must also recognize that there is more than one way to get to an end goal. So the discovery learning method is a great choice for ESL students as well as students with behavioral or developmental problems. A student who cannot sit still in class will have a chance to actively take part in the learning process. The student whose first language is not English will be exploring ideas instead of being told what to think and possibly not understanding the concept because of a language barrier. When the discovery learning method is used, students are on task more often because they're actively part of the learning process instead of just being expectators. Now, um, we have also to consider the principles of discovery learning model. We have problem solving. Uh, instructors should guide and motivate learners to Seek for a solution by combining existing and newly acquired information and simplifying knowledge. In this manner, learners are driving force behind learning, take an active role, and establish broader applications for skills. 
through activities that encourage risk, problem solving, and probing. We have principle two, learner management. Now, instructors should allow participants to work either alone or with others and learn at their own pace. So this flexibility makes learning the exact opposite of a static sequencing of lessons and activities. Relieves learners from unnecessary stress and makes them feel the own learning. The third principle is integrating and connecting. Now, instructors should teach learners how to combine prior knowledge with new and encourage them to connect to the real world. Familiar scenarios become the basis of new information, encouraging learners to extend what they know and invent something new. Principle 4 is about information analysis and interpretation. Now, um, discovery learning is a process-oriented and not content-oriented and is based on the assumption that learning is not a mere set of facts. So learners, in fact, learn to analyze and interpret the acquired information rather than memorize the correct answer. And principle five, failure and feedback. So learning doesn't only happen when we find the right answers. It also occurs through failure. Discovery learning does not focus on finding the right end result, but the new things we discover in the process. And um, it's the instructor's responsibility to provide feedback since without it, learning is incomplete. Now, overall, the discovery method is highly supported by educational psychologists. So they agree with Kant, Piaget, Vygotsky, and Brunner, as well as educational philosopher Dewey, that learning is based on knowing and doing. If a teacher takes into consideration that a child already has some prior knowledge, then the teacher will be able to show students how their lives are connected to the content without having to work to create that connection. It takes work to successfully use the discovery learning method in the classroom and teachers have to be careful to not have class activities just for the sake of having activities. So the discovery learning method is hands-on, focuses on the process, and encourages students to look for solutions. Instead of just teaching students to memorize rules or concepts, this method lets them apply ideas to their lives, creating memorable lessons that will help turn them into lifelong learners.